knowing China's thoughts on human rights and the way they react to protests, we could see some ugly scenes as never seen before. In fact, the Olympic Games in Berlin just before the Second World War would not be a patch on this. In France, French President Nicolas Sargosi said he might reconsider attending the opening ceremony of the Beijing Games in response to the Chinese government's harsh crackdown on protests in Tibet. On April the 2nd, Paris Mayor Bertrand Delano announced that City Hall will display a banner supporting human rights when the Olympic torch relay passes through the French capital. He said Paris defends human rights all over the world. Now then, listen to this. A Chinese foreign ministry spokeswoman responded by urging French politicians to respect the Olympic spirit. Now doesn't that strike you as being somewhat hypocritical when the Chinese authorities use batons, electronic batons at that, and bullets fired from a gun to quell peaceful protests, to subdue free speech? Not only that, they torture their own citizens. They imprison their own citizens because they want a free mind. It is hypocritical, the Olympic spirit indeed. It's about time the Chinese government looked at the spirit of the human being, the spirit of the innocent people who have had enough of their draconian ways. Oh, come on, Mrs. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman, what are you talking about, the spirit of the Olympics, when you can't even see the spirit of your own people in the streets? Your government's nefarious. Your government's draconian. They crush innocent people's free speech. Don't come here talking about the spirit of the Olympics when you wouldn't know a spirit if it faced you headlong. Over the past year, the campaign group Human Rights Watch has documented numerous human rights abuses in China relating to its hosting of the 2008 Olympic Games, including media and internet censorship, extrajudicial house arrests, repression of civil society, abuses of migrant construction workers in Beijing, forced evictions and the ongoing crackdown on protests in Tibet. Last week, leading human rights advocate Hu Jia was given a three and a half year sentence for criticizing the Chinese government in the context of the games. Previously, Yang Chulin received a five year sentence for having begun a petition entitled we want human rights, not at the Olympics. Now come on, Chinese government and Miss Foreign Ministry spokeswoman. This is what you are. That's no spirit. Come on. How dare you advocate the Olympic spirit? You hypocrites. In the United States, the city of San Francisco is the only North American area through which the Olympic torch will pass. Despite the ongoing crackdown in Tibet, recent jailing of leading human rights advocates in China and other abuses that are taking place as a result of the 2008 Games in Beijing, the mayor continues to call hosting the relay an extraordinary honor and insists hosting the flame is about sports, not politics. Yes, Mr. Mayor, an extraordinary honor that your American businesses can have cheap labor and sell your products at an extortionate rate in the United States. An extraordinary honor indeed. And don't use the old sport versus politics cliche. It is old fashioned. It doesn't mean a thing. And it's only an escape route for you and your business friends. Okay, so we'll take politics out of the Olympic Games. We'll go to the Olympics then, and still people will suffer. There will be protests in the street, and people will be put under the cosh, into prison. They will be tortured. They will be attacked by electronic batons. In fact, the Chinese authorities might even shoot bullets into crowds. You may never know, because you're taking politics out of it. You are turning a blind eye, just like the rest of your partners in the United States and the United Kingdom. When China won the right to host the Beijing Olympics, they were told to get their human rights practices in order. They haven't done this. This is blatantly obvious. My main worry now is that when this Olympic Games goes ahead, and of course it will, this could be the biggest human rights bloodbath the world has ever seen. Let's just hope the Chinese authorities do show some restraint when the protests happen in the street and they are going to happen. There will be mass protests in the streets of China and elsewhere in the province and the region.
Of course, world media cameras will be on them, so they might just show some restraint. But what will happen behind closed doors when they take the protesters away? This we'll never know, because there will be a media crackdown, as there always has been. As I said earlier in this report, this could be the worst Olympic Games in human history. I hope it remains peaceful. I hope people aren't injured. And I hope protesters are allowed to voice their opinion on the streets, outside the stadium, in Tibet, outside government buildings. I hope the banners remain flying, and I hope they are not taken down with an electronic baton or a bullet fired from a gun. There is every potential this will happen, because the Chinese authorities have never shown restraint when they are pushed. Let's just see what happens, and I truly hope it remains peaceful. China's consistent use of excessive military force to stifle dissent has resulted in widespread human rights abuses including multiple cases of arbitrary arrest, political imprisonment, torture and execution. Human rights groups have documented at least 60 deaths of peaceful demonstrators since 1987 and there is thought to be many, many more. In Tibet, human rights groups have confirmed by name over 700 political prisoners, although they are likely to be hundreds more whose names are not confirmed. Many are detained without charge or trial for up to four years through administrative regulations entitled Re-Education Through Labour. China is a major player on the international economic scene and many Western businesses have their interests over there. They make vast profits out of cheap sweatshop labor. China's human rights record is abysmal. This regime is both oppressive, totalitarian and they don't give a damn about the freedom of the individual or the freedom of speech. In recent weeks, the oppressive Chinese regime have dealt a vile blow to freedoms in Tibet. Monks have been killed, innocent people have died. Most Western governments are just paying lip service against these abuses. They are not going to do a thing, for they have too many business interests there. They make too much profit out of sweatshop labor. So it's up to us. Go to the Edge's action page at theedgeam.com and make a difference. We are running three actions on this oppressive regime in China. That's the edgeam.com forward slash edge action. Do you think you can make a difference in a world where there is so much injustice? Does this injustice upset you? Does it make you feel powerless, overwhelmed? I mean, what can one person do? Take action from the comfort of your chair. Make a difference with the new Edge Action area of the Edge AM's website. Make sure you make a difference by going to theedgeam.com forward slash edge action. That's theedgeam.com forward slash edge action. You can make a difference. Thursdays on the Edge. We walk to our future. Our future appears every second of every day of our existence. Of this we have no choice. Continually we walk into the unknown for the future is not known to us save for assumption, guesswork and planning. Yet 